A troubling and heartbreaking report about a young girl who suffered extreme poverty, bullying, sex assault, and mental illness is at the core of an expose about the former Woodside Rehabilitation Center, Vermont's only detention facility for troubled youth. Joe Sexton writes about it for seven days. Joe, you're a longtime veteran reporter and editor for the New York Times and ProPublica. You've worked on this for many months, and Joe, frankly, the descriptions of the alleged mistreatment in this report are difficult to read. Tell us about the young girl in your story. So the young girl was uh, named Grace Welch. Um, she was a kid who had grown up in rural Vermont, in the wilds of rural Vermont. Uh, there was some difficulty, in, you know, in the circumstances of her uh, upbringing. Um, her family struggled with some issues. Poverty was a question, according to investigators. Um, ultimately, she would be uh, taken into state custody uh, when she was 11 years old. The Department for Children and Families took custody of Grace. Um, and over the next uh, and remaining eight years of her life, um, she would have, you know, further entanglements with DCF, um, ultimately being placed for the first time at Woodside uh, in 2016. Grace would have two stays at Woodside, and in each one, uh, the record makes clear she was subjected to, you know, uh, gross mistreatment. Uh, kept in isolation, stripped naked for, you know, weeks on end, um, ultimately left to, you know, uh, uh, cover herself in her own waist um, while she self-harmed in front, all while cameras were rolling at Woodside. The, the facility had a remarkable policy of videotaping many of the staff's interactions with children. Some of what you write about here was recorded. There's that video evidence. How did you go about verifying other pieces of information? Who do you attribute your research to? Well, we know one of the things we did in the seven days article is we have a reporting box which lists all the interviews that were done and all of the you know array of documents and medical records and uh, child welfare records and court records. Uh, that I was able to pull together. Grace's grand, uh, grandma, Kathy, had given me basically her complete case file, um, and I was able to, you know, try to put together a story both of Grace's life and death at the just before her, birth, her 19th birthday, and the sort of larger history of Woodside that Grace would be caught up in. Uh, how did you get this video? That I can't tell you. Okay, uh, uh, you write that the allegations of abuse were widely known even all the way to the top in state agencies, the judicial system, elected leaders, yet it went on for years, why? Uh, well, that's the, the, the question this story puts before the people of Vermont and the folks who were responsible for what happened at Woodside. Um, it's a little hard to fathom, to your point, there, much of this was known, right, or at least the bare particulars. There's a headline here about a lawsuit filed in 2019, and there's another headline about a settlement when seven of the kids who were kept at Woodside were awarded $4.5 million for what they suffered at Woodside. Um, but my aim was to try to pull together the documentary history um, to give voice and, and uh, texture to the child, a child, one of the seven who had sued. Um, and, you know, my hope is that in creating a story that can make you care about this child and make you upset at what happened to her, that, you know, things can be done better, more safely, more humanely going forward. Finally, you write that these practices ended after a federal lawsuit and a ruling by Judge Jeffrey Crawford, and that was the beginning of the end of Woodside. Correct. The uh, Judge Crawford had, you know, organized a hearing after a lawsuit had been filed by Disability Rights Vermont. Um, he held the hearing. He was given the videos of some of the mistreatment of kids, uh, and it didn't take him very long. 18 days later, he came back and granted a temporary injunction to halt what was going on at Woodside, saying that it was an institution in need of systemic reform. He had looked at the videos. He had looked at the videos involving Grace. And, and described them as horrific, um, and that in within minutes of watching the staff's dealings with Grace at Woodside, 
he had concluded it was not a facility capable of handling kids with profound emotional and mental health issues. Whatever happened to this young girl, Grace, who you focused on? So Grace uh, won her release from Woodside in 2019. Uh, she was able to return home. Um, she graduated high school. Um, she was beginning to put together a life for herself. Um, she found her first boyfriend. Um, and according to the family, that boyfriend had introduced her to uh, illicit drugs for the first time. And at the age barely of 19, uh, Grace died of an overdose. Um, and her family, you know, was left shattered behind. Her grandma, Kathy, her mother, Josie, her siblings, Faith, Hope, and little Jean. It's a powerful piece, and it's out in seven days. Joe Sexton, thank you. Take care. Thank you very much.